What is going on, you guys? I know a lot of you have been waiting for this, and I can f finally just break from my hibernation talking about the Raiders. It's been quite a while, and, well, I, I still am out of the market. But enough about me. The Raiders season is upon us. That last preseason game is usually nothing anyways, so those guys that usually play the last game get cut. So what are my thoughts on this season? Well, I'm, I'm kind of like just meh. Right? There's... There's direction that can go both ways. There's a reason for optimism, and then there's also on the flip side. So I'm in the middle, and I can see things happen both ways. So first of all, the drafts. I mean, yeah, some of the draft picks look okay. We've seen some good progress of guys like Carl Joseph and company. Uh, maybe I know in camp some guys have looked good. Some guys don't look in the preseason, but it is what it is. Uh, really, I have high expectations for a guy like Sean Smith, uh, that was supposed to be the big free agent pickup besides Bruce Irvin and uh, T.H. Osamelli. He didn't look very good in coverage. I was disappointed there, and I hope he doesn't become this bust signing. Uh, also, i got to give credit to Reggie for keeping David Amerson and paying him early. I mean, that's a guy who was once a high second-round pick, and he was considered a bust and a reject, but then he has a good season with the Raiders. Earns a paycheck. Uh, like anything, th these contracts are kind of year by year. Uh, they can always cut them a year later, and most of that money won't be seen. But Reggie does, I think, will do a good job of keeping guys that he likes and make sure he signs them early. He's, he did that with Michael Crabtree during the season. So i got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, but this is the part where we need to see growth. All right, Some people are thinking about that one word called the postseason, something that we haven't seen since Bill Callahan. It's been how many coaches ago? Oh, I've lost track. Oh, let's see, Dennis Allen, Hugh Jackson, <laughs> Tom Cable, North Turner. Yeah. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah, Lane Kiffin, uh, Art Shell. Yeah, the, the list goes on. Yeah, pretty much. It's been a while. It has been quite a while since the Raiders have seen that since Bill Callahan took over and the Gruden Bowl happened. They haven't sniffed the postseason since. They've come close. That one year they sold their souls with Carson Palmer. We all know how that ended. So they've been they've had to pay, make it pay for the last couple years, just being in cap hell and getting out of cap hell. So now Derek Carr has his offensive line. He's got Osmele, the Raiders, quote unquote, overpaid for the guard. Uh, a lot of hype on him. A lot of hype with Rodney Hudson. And supposedly Menelik Watson is making some progress. I know I think Austin Howard's on at a tackle. You know, the offensive line is supposed to be legit. Okay, that's that's something that was all hyped up last year. And then injuries took place, and then it got terrible. So, Derek Carr. I'm still on the fence with him. I got to see it from him. I got to see a lot of these mental uphead mistakes be reduced. Yeah, you know, he makes these plays in crunch time that look like a rookie. Okay, this is now his third year. This is that year he's got to show me that he's elite. Everyone's been high on him, and I get it. He had a very good first half. He did not have a good second half, and that's when the offensive line got worse. He was limited to resources. Uh, the Raiders couldn't run the ball and so on. So how does, how does Derek Carr do? It really hinges on the running game. I need to see the Raiders run the ball well. they got to show to me that they can run the ball, because if they're going to ask Carr to try to throw the ball like he's another uh, L.E. quarterback or something, that. He's going to throw some picks, and we're going to complain about his mistakes. So they got to be able to run the ball, and that offensive line is going to need to be healthy. I think, you know, when Rodney Hudson was out last year, we saw how exposed the offensive line was, and, you know, one injury can ruin your season sometimes. So Derek Carr, it will, if the running game does well, then he will do well. If not, then I'm still up in the air. I, I don't think Carr himself can carry the team and carry the offense up. On the defensive side, how does Ben Heaney look? That's the big question. He had a productive second half, given the circumstances, but now he's the everyday middle linebacker. What's going to happen there? I don't know. And nobody else knows until the season comes. That's a guy that, that to me, that's where the defense will be hinged on, one way or another, whether how well they stop the run or not, or how well he drops back. You know, if they get past him, you know, the Raiders are going to be giving up plays and they're going to be screwed. So. I need to see a lot from him. I need to see progress from Carl Joseph. Obviously, a lot of hype with him. Now, some people are going to view this as a reach, but Reggie 
Reggie's board is always different than what the media said. I still think there might have been better players, but the pass rush, Khalil Mack. This is where people are also drinking the Kool-Aid. They think Khalil Mack is going to carry the defense, and understandably so. He's been legit. Uh, there's a reason why Derek Carr even admitted, oh, I'm happy they took you before me. He, he said something along those lines. So Khalil Mack, the safest pick of his draft, and he's lived up to the hype. He's going to be carrying this team defensively. But I still am going to be looking at Ben Heaney the most. If that falls, and if Sean Smith falls, then our secondary is going to be a mess. Maybe our run stopping might be a little bit of a mess. So i got to see how Ben Heaney looks. I'm going to be very curious about him. Uh, special teams are special teams, and we're not going to really judge that until the time comes. Who knows if it's Janikowski's last year. We don't know. Those things go year by year. As long as he looks good, he'll keep his job. If he doesn't, then they might be looking for someone the following season. Uh, yeah, so special teams, I hope, hope all that is okay. But now there becomes the outlook on the team. What happens to the, the Raiders? Everyone's buying in. Everyone says this is that first year they sniff the postseason for the first time in 14 years. Yep, is that right? 14 years? No, oh, yeah. So we look at the rest of the division. The Chiefs, they were, they were probably the most consistent team last year, and they, they had a good season. They won a wild card game. I think they're going to be the favorites. People, if you're talking about proven stuff and based off last year, they, they have stability on offense. They have some above average defense. And when you're above average, you got to win games. So Chiefs are, I think, in my opinion, the favorite of the division. The Broncos, team that has a seventh round pick from a year ago as their quarterback. You cannot write them off. I know the Broncos, everyone's going to react at their quarterback situation and laugh, but their defense carried them last year. We cannot just write them off and say they're, they're going to be trash and all that. They, they've done respectable in the past. I, I think they're a 500 team, but their defense can carry them, and it showed last year when but Peyton Manning didn't play very well. They won something called a Super Bowl, so we, can't, we just can't write them off 100%. Uh, and then there's the Chargers. Chargers are a rebuilding team. I don't think they're going to be where they were last year. I didn't expect them to be that terrible, <laughs> honestly. I, I thought, okay, they, they also look like a 500 team, a very mediocre type of team. That, you know, they, they, they played close to the Raiders that second game, but, and Phillip Rivers is Phillip Rivers, but they're not, they're not this cupcake, I, I don't think. They're, Joey Bose is going to impact them now that he's on the team. So where does that leave the Raiders? Well, I have them right in the middle. I think that they're very capable of going 10-6 and six as their ceiling if everything goes right. But they got to prove it. Like anything, this is a prove-it season of saying, are you a legit playoff team or not? And worst-case scenario, if injuries happen, we know a lot of losses are going to happen if there's injuries. But, yeah, worst-case scenario, assuming that health is not the issue, 6-10, and 7-9, and nine, that's, that's the worst case. I personally think they can go 9-7. 8-8, 9-7 eight and eight, nine and seven is realistic. But I need to see Carr take that next step. I need to see him cut those rookie mistakes not make these prayer throws and fades, just trying to go for it all on a throw with Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree. I need to see him make smart throws. I need to see him look better on the field, and I need to see him take that next step to say he's being an elite quarterback. Because that's what everyone's been saying. That's what the media's been saying. It's weird to say that maybe we have a franchise quarterback, and that's very possible. But I have to see it. I'm still on that fence where... He's good, but he's not great. He's just in that good category where he's still making more mistakes than he needs to to get the Raiders over the hump. So, 9-7 and seven is where I personally have the Raiders. I think, I think they're capable with, with the defense they have and the offense they have to have a winning record. But i got to see it to believe it, once again, like anything else. Best case, 10-6, and six, maybe 11-5 and five if everything goes right. But that's, that's everything having to go right. Who, where, you know, some teams will get that luck. They need every break to go their way. So that's where I have it. Let me know what you think about this Raiders team. And once again, I will be talking after every game as much as I can. Videos might be coming on a Monday, maybe the day after the game. I might miss it. Uh, but I will find a way to watch tape. I just will not be able to always watch every game live. As you all know, I am out of the market. I'm out of the Bay Area. So my TV will have some other NFL team on it most likely. 
and uh, now I have to kind of dig. And the other thing is I work on Sundays, so <laughs> I can watch a little bit live, but I won't be able to watch beginning to end like a lot of you. And also, the other question I have on this video besides what do you think the Raiders are going to be, where, what are you going to happen if they move to Las Vegas? They tried to get their Carson plan. That, that failed. But if the Las Vegas thing happens, say they go to Las Vegas, what, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm going to be a fan of this team no matter what. I'll be sad if they leave Oakland. I, I honestly will be a little bit sad, but I will still be a Raiders fan no matter what. So that, that's my take. It really hinges on Jerry Jones. If Jerry Jones wants them to move, then he will get all the owners to vote and go on his side. So it's up to the Cowboys owner, Jerry Jones. If Otherwise, I know last time they did not give it to Mark Davis, and I know owners don't really respect Mark Davis. There's also that. So, you know, I, I would like it if they stay in Oakland personally, but I will still be a fan no matter where they move. It, it will not, I won't just rescind anything. I'll still be here and all that. So I hope they stay in Oakland. I feel that's where their identity is. That's where their first history is and all that. And hey, Al Davis, they're always tied to Al Davis for obvious reasons. But, you know, if y'all didn't know, Al Davis is buried in Oakland, so there's that. I will be sad if they move to Vegas a little bit. But we'll see. You know, there's already a hockey team that's going to be there in a year or so. Let me know what y'all think. Go Raiders, and uh, that is my preview and thoughts on this season. We'll see you guys later.